two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. But you should ride, ride, so join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, 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 till the rock daylight. We're gonna rock, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. All right. And now that the uh, mold is complete and in really good shape, it's time to create the support jacket, also known as the mother mold. And uh, one example I have here, beneath and in front of the deer antlers, it's going to be made in this type of fashion. But this is a mold I made years ago. This mold is well over 15 or 20 years old. Uh, this is a mold for a large set of springbok horns. And down here is the casting of those horns. This mold was a latex mold, not a silicone mold. And the uh, after it was made, I heated it in my kitchen oven and I vulcanized the rubber which means I heat cured the rubber now you could do that with some silicones it's not always necessary but it, it it doesn't hurt it can be done now this mold was made with one unopened horn sheath because this is really really large and they're very 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 close together as you can see see how, how tight the horns are okay so there is there is one uh, incision made on the back of one horn. That's this horn here. And this horn is left intact. This, this sleeve of the mold is entirely uncut. The one that is cut is this one here. And it's cut all the way through. It's cut from the bottom all these all the way along not to the tip I believe it ends right about here but this is the kind of structure I'll be building to house the support jacket for the white-tailed deer the one thing that differentiates this mold and its its support structure from the white tail mold is that it had to be secured at the rear section of the mold. The reason is simply the growth pattern of the antelope horns. They come way back. All right. There's no place in the middle to be able to secure the support structure. Now on the white tail, of course, the middle of the skull plate is there, there's a large gap between the middle of the skull plate and where the burr of the antlers begins, so that's not going to be a problem. But this was just, uh, this this had to hang out over its upright support, and it does need an upright support in order to properly pour the resin. And you can see the foot pad for this extends out as well. And this, this little uh, cap, this was an old Bondo cap, I believe, or some kind of little plastic uh, container. This is used to hold the hardware, and I'll probably do something like that with the white tail only because it's convenient. Okay, to start, I'm going to point out an interesting piece of equipment that is not very often used in taxidermy for whatever reason. And that is the contour gauge. And that's what I have here. This one is from Depp. I have another one here from Precision Components. This one here. Okay. And I have a metal I have a metal contour gauge. This is from General Tools. Um, now this is kind of tough to use on the rub. You want to make sure you don't slice into it. But basically, the way these things work is you can take a contour tool, make sure it's flat now, make sure it's click down flat. You can then take it to the skull plate and 
press it down over the skull plate and this will capture the contour of the skull plate. That's the one from Pre Precision Components. Now here's the one from Dep. Oh, QEP, I'm sorry. I thought it was DEP. This is QEP. And you press down, you get the entire contour of the skull plate. And that's what I did last evening with the metal one. Worked it over in place, and you get the contour. Now, why do you need a contour? You need to capture the contour of the skull, the skull plate, the skull, uh, the top of the skull, so you can transfer that to a board to cut out to build the center part of the support mold, the support structure. Now, before I remembered about my my contour uh, tools, I did a rough hand-drawn outline of the skull plate. And as you can see, my hand-drawn outline didn't exactly jive with the actual contour of the skull plate, which is why these things are so important. Quite a difference between the two. Quite a difference between the two. So what I'll do now is flip this around, lay this on the wood, and trace out the actual contour with my pencil. Now when you trace the pattern out onto the wood, you want to be sure not to press too hard against the contour tool, or you can conceivably move these pegs, and that's not what you want to do. So now we've got a properly done and accurate contour. This will be cut out with a jigsaw. Or if you have a bandsaw, cut it out on a bandsaw. My bandsaw is broken at this time. I'll be cutting it by hand with a jigsaw. Yay! There we have it. And now this fits perfectly. It didn't need to be an exact fit, but it needed to be, it needed to be close enough that it would fit evenly over the front and back. Now this will allow for the little wooden blocks, yes, 62 years old, I'm playing with blocks. These little blocks here will be secured on either side with proper size bolts and wing nuts. As you saw with the uh, Springbok uh, mold support, the Bondo glass will cover the outside, go all the way down to the bottom, and secure this little board right here to the center board, which will not be permanently attached to the Bondo glass. But this is the start of the mold, and we continue. And here are two of the upright braces drilled out with a quarter inch bit for quarter inch bolts. And they're clamped together. Be sure that the holes are drilled the same for each side. And this bolt goes all the way through, out the other side, and in between, sandwiched in between, will be the center board. And that is how this is secured to all. All they have to do is determine, correctly determine, its place, the center board's place on the skull plate and the upright braces, their place on the skull plate. And at and this point, a second pair are drilled through for the front of the center plate for the mold. done. Now when clamping the upright supports to the center support, 
you want to make sure that these little boards are making contact with the base. And you want to make sure that you're straight. You want to make sure that they're even in, that they're in the same distance so that the holes go through the holes on the other side. We want to line up the holes for the center board and we want to make sure that the holes we've pre-drilled in these end pieces, these upright supports, meet on the other side. So the distance from the end of the board in, the end of the board in, must be the same. So that's going to be checked with a ruler. Okay, I have the main bracing accomplished, finally. Uh, it was really unnecessary to have both sides lined up. All I had to do was line up one side, drill through, and attach the bolts through the opposite piece. I made it harder than it had to be. So, live and learn. Live and learn that I am an idiot at times. Now, the next piece to be assembled is a cross piece for the antlers. This will hold the front of the mold steady. Okay, now in order to do this, I'm going to have to attach some little pieces that will be part of the mother mold and then simply bolt into the center support. So that's the next part of this project. You don't need to see me drill holes and bolt it together. It's like watching paint dry and we know how boring that can be. Okay, I went out and I ripped the full width of the 1x4. I got it down to about two and one-eighth inches wide. Um, I've got the little spacers. These little spacers right here will be attached to the um, the Bondo glass and I've got them clamped in place so I can then drill out a couple of holes on this end and that will attach them to the main board. But for now that's where we're at. Okay we have the spanner ripped down, like I said, with the little uh, braces, little elevator bra braces bolted into place and they attach like so. And this will be glassed onto around the outside. The bundle glass will come into contact and connect here with just this piece, just this piece alone, and here with just this top piece alone. But there we have it. And it's better that I um, ripped this on my uh, table saw because it was banging into the center board. Now it's not touching it. Now there's plenty of room there. It's no longer touching it, no longer making contact. So it's in good shape. All right, I have a can of Smooth On Sonite Wax too. This is a paste wax sealing agent. What I like about it, it's soft enough, unlike the hard paste wax you use on a floor, soft enough to get on a brush and apply and I'm applying it to the wood of the base to keep the Bondo glass material from adhering to the wood. There's no need to put any on the silicone because only silicone will stick to silicone. Bondo glass will not stick to silicone. Not permanently anyway. I need it to stick just a little bit while it's being applied. But I'm going to I'm going to put this on the wood that I do not want to be stuck to the bondo. All around. Now I'm going to put it to the center board not worried about taking the little blocks off because they need to be in place and the bondo will stick to this wood but I do not want it to stick to this wood so I'm going to coat the ends real well as well as both sides. And 
another coating on the end, especially down at the bottom where the Bondo is going to make real close contact with the wood. I want it heavy on here. And this, this stuff is good. It makes it really, really slick. Okay. I will let this stuff set up. Now, I'll also apply it to the exposed spanner. Or I should say the exposed wood of the spanner as well. At least where it's going to contact the antlers. Like so. Like so. Like so. All right. I'm going to leave this overnight and the next thing to be done will be to work with the Bondo glass and actually get the mother mold created. Just like so. We'll let this all set up. Let it fully set overnight. Prior to starting the Bondo glass application, I've sort of temporarily attached the spanner board to the antler mold with black electrical tape. Uh, this will not be permanent as the fiberglass will hold the little riser blocks on each end in place as we go along. And you can see here how it's all held in place. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to just simply make a couple of holes part way into the wood on the riser blocks to give the Bondo glass something to hold on to, something, give it a bite. Not going all the way through. Not going all the way through, but just making some little indentations in the wood. I'm going to do this on both sides, and I'm going to do it on the blocks, on the risers, on the antler spanner Okay, as well. what I have here are the ingredients, the particular ingredients to create the Bondo glass cradle. Uh, mother mold, I'm sorry. Bondo glass, of course. Disposable chinette paper plates, plenty of craft sticks, tongue depressor size sticks, and of course the cream hardener. So, without any further ado, here we go. We're going to mix up a batch of the Bondo, Bondo glass. Need, it needs to be stirred up first. See how the resin has separated from the, uh, the fiber. So I need to mix this now up I first. carefully measure out a prescribed amount. Yeah, very careful, very prescribed. <laughs> okay, that's a big bunch. That's quite a bunch, quite a batch, quite a batch. As you can see, quite a lot. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to add the cream hardener. I have, I have uh, distributed this within the tube. I'm not going to mix up a very hot batch because I need to spread this out. But I am going to mix it up enough. You need to make sure this is thoroughly mixed. You don't want to see any of the greenish 
that greenish gray color, that greenish color. You want it to be kind of a uniform ugh, greenish brown, but you want no streaking. You want no green streaks of the Bondo glass to show. So take as much time as you need to mix it up as thoroughly as need be. Now I'm getting ready to apply this to the mold. That's the next step. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now we need to apply this. We got to make sure the center board stays centered. It doesn't get shifted around as the Bondo glass is pressed up against it. All right, now you can see I'm making sure that it's contacting the silicone, like so. Oh no, okay. All right. Okay, now I've got this filled all the way around, and she's starting to gel up, which is great. I just want to smooth the Bondo glass around, even off around the base. I want to make sure full contact is being made with the wood upright supports all the way around. And I want to make sure that this is centered. Anytime it moves, you need to check it, make sure it stays centered. All right. Now I'm going to work this down. about midway on the silicone. Just gonna use this as a modeling tool and model the fiberglass where I want it. I should say the Bondo glass. I call it fiberglass because it's it has fiberglass in the Bondo. I want to try and get a nice even edge for the mold. When necessary, I can fold it over on itself, back down on itself, so that it lays properly. Right, the next thing I need to do is tilt this entire rig on its side so I can come up and around the antlers with now, the Bondo I've glass. I've tilted the mounting stand over so I can apply the rest of the Bondo glass to this what would be vertical section without it all falling off. Now I've taken a piece of 18 gauge wire and bent it along the length and shape of the end beam the, and the, the rack. This is just to give a little extra support underneath, I should say, into the body of the Bondo glass. It's not always necessary, but I kind of like to do it. I just keep bending it until it all fits just so. Then it, it, will, be, it will get locked down into the Bondo as I go. Okay, I start the additional Bondo glass on the tine, and I'll be working down the length of the antler. Just like so. Now, hold on a sec. Here we go. I let gravity take the Bondo glass to reach about the midway point on each tine and a little around because it, be, it can be taken back some. But I go like so, right up to the tip. And... I now work my way down. 
the main beam and I make sure that this little metal support gets well blended into the Bondo glass. I want it I want it in there. I want it as part of the support structure. And you can see how this is coating really really brilliantly now. now I, again this is not a very hot mixture. There's a little more in here than it was last time uh, I should say the first mix but I would not consider this a hot mix. Now I need both hands to work this portion here onto the wood. Okay, this gets worked onto the wood, the little wood post, support post, and cover the wire as I go. Now this is really pretty easy. I mean, it's a stinky, stinky thing to do, but uh, this is, it's a very, very easy and pretty economical way to go. I'm going to finish this off and I'll come back on camera when I get it complete. Alrighty, here we are at this point. Um, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a disposable brush and saturate it with some alcohol, just simple rubbing alcohol, and try to smooth over any of the glass fibers that are sticking up. Uh, well, too late. This is basically set. <laughs> okay. So here's here's the the mother mold of the support cradle as it stands right now. Okay. Um, oh yeah, this has already gone through heat and it's already beginning to set. What I'm going to do now on this side, I've got some areas here where it's showing um, quite a bit of fibers and uh, high spots and I want to fill those in like these groove this groove right here and I want to fill that in I want to even it off a bit I want to even off the edges so I'm going to mix up another really light batch of the Bondo glass and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of smooth it out and make it look cosmetically very nice that's what I want to do all right, now I have removed the electrical tape from this tine and have gone up over the tip with the Bondo glass. I'm using a disposable brush. I'm using a disposable brush that has al rubbing alcohol on it and working the glass while it's still very wet and fresh. I've also added a little more to the end of the tip on the main beam and have worked the glass down onto the little riser board and right now I'm smoothing all out. I'm making sure it doesn't wrap all the way around but I do want it to securely cradle cradle the silicone mold which is its purpose that's why this is a support cradle and you can see now as I work it with the brush that has alcohol on it how it pulls back from the silicone so Bondo in and of itself has really no adhesive qualities it can be used to create a buildup which is what this is doing but it will not stick to si silicone nothing really sticks to silicone Silicone sticks to silicone. That's why you have to be careful when you're applying it on glass. Silicone will stick to glass. The main component of glass, silica. And there you have it. And there's that. Little fact. Factoid. As the kids like to say. All right, there we go. That's that's built up real nice. They're built up real nice on the tines. The only one I think I need to build up a little more now is this one here. I'm going to add a little more along the edge. I want to come in about midway and over the tip a little more. 
this is right now this is rather on the weak side right here so I'm, I'm going to build that up as well all right this is now done I mixed this a little hotter than the others because it was just a small area and I didn't want to get a lot of sag out of it I wanted it to stay where it was put so I'm gonna let this side completely set go through its heat cycle and cooling cycle uh, I'm gonna break for lunch and when I come back I'm gonna continue working on the support structure on the other side but here's where I'm at right now with this nifty nifty looking I'd say pretty good pretty good looks like fingers okay the support cradle is done been done all the way around as you can see even did the back of the brow tines and filled in this gap in here right up to the center board all right so all the way around now this I will let this sit now overnight fully cure and tomorrow hopefully I can pull off the support cradle and then pull the mold from the antlers fingers crossed we'll see you then Okay, time to remove the wing nuts and going to remove all the wood, the support wood, the spanner and the centerboard. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the hardware. Okay. It comes right off. Sort of comes right off. <laughs> all righty. And you see from all that, all that knocking around, this stayed put. Now, the next time I do a deer antler mold, I will stagger the placement of these bolts um, they have to go through two different sides because the wing nuts are making contact now wing nuts are used because they're easily removed and replaced now if need be I may enlarge the holes just a little bit to make removal of the bolts just that much easier need to gently tap the bolts to get them out and I say gently because you don't want it, you don't want to damage the uh, the end of the threads to get the wing nuts back on. And I just simply grab with the pliers and pull them out. That's why I say I may I may go ahead and enlarge the holes just a bit, just just a tiny bit, so that this doesn't that this isn't required. And I've got the hardware in the top of a <laughs> bondo cap. Okay, now I'm going to use a 5-in-1 tool, which is a little more sturdy than a, uh, an ordinary uh, paint scraper. I'm going to use this to work the sides of the mold away from the center board. That's working well. Turn this around, do the front. You don't want to just, you know, yank the thing away. You don't want to snap anything. I'll get on the other side here. 
ordinary paint scrapers are just a little too thin I think now this this needs to be worked seems to be adhering a little bit here to the baseboard but we'll get the tool under it it'll come it'll come away in just a minute or so get this located down at the bottom there we go I can remove the center board Now I can concentrate on working away the support mold from the antlers. Okay, now comes time for the regular paint strip, uh, paint scraper to get under and just lift this up a little bit. It's just, it's kind of tight. We'll get this underneath. There we go. There we are. See, that's what waxing the board did. It's just a little tight for whatever reason. Not a big deal. The next thing to do is to work the silicone from the jacket. Just loosening it up around the edges. And it will come away very, very easily from the edges, like so. You just work it with the fingers just to get it loose from the fiberglass we need to come along and snip or clip the edges of the fiberglass a little bit here and there other than that this is working out real real well we loosen this up and it makes it easier to slip this away from the antlers now I'm going to go with the looser side first that's this side here I'm going to work this away coming away nicely with the five in one five in one tool okay now that I've got it loosened up around I'm going to just start by gently pushing away from the antlers and you can see it coming away coming away you got to be very, 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 very careful. Now it's adhering right here up at the tip, so I'm going to loosen this up, get that off, and off will come the first side, just like so. Just like so. Wonderbar! Here is the left side of the antler cradle removed. Now this side is going to be worked by pulling towards me and jiggling it a little bit and again I need to loosen up this tip get it free. Now I'm going to push it away There we are. Got it away. There's the second side. Removed. Now the next step is to loosen up the silicone mold all the way around the skull plate, the base. Get under here. Get under here with a five-in-one tool. My little red devil. Five-in-one tool. Just loosen it up. Loosen it up. Like so. Like so. Like so. Now. I'm going to attempt. I'm going to attempt to lift this off of the antlers without making an opening incision on either side or even just one side and I think the best way to do that is to first remove the skull plate from the baseboard and to do that 
I have to get underneath I have to get underneath the mold and get in through the clay with a screwdriver and unscrew it from the base. This was screwed in from the top down and then the holes were covered over with uh, oil based clay. Whoops. And I just scooped out the clay a little bit. To remove this screw. It's a, it's a short screw. At the back of this is already loosened from the base. I just want to get the screw out of there. I want to be able to remove it entirely. I can hang with pliers and pull the screw out. There we go, that's that one. And I'll get the other two. Same way. Now what I do is I lift lift the silicone, get under with a modeling tool, and just pop this little bit of clay. This was protolina clay. Pop that clay out of the tops of the screw sockets. And get in here with the Phillips head and simply unscrew the skull plate from the base. It's, these are short screws. This is not going to be a big deal to remove this from the base. I'll do the same thing now that it's loose from the wood. We just reach in with the pliers, pull the screw out completely. Normally you could screw them from the bottom, but seeing as how this was a resin casting skull plate, I attached it to the board the way it would be attached to the headboard on a head form from the top down rather than from the bottom up. Pull the screw out all the way. It's, it's off the board, so let me get the screw out. Makes it a little difficult. Everything is kind of slick and slippery. Okay, now the, next, the next thing is to go around and sort of rotate the silicone mold around all the tines just to loosen them, including the main beams themselves. I'm going to loosen this up. I might try to lift this right off the uh, antlers, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. It looks like I'm going to make an incision from the base to about this point here. But I want to make sure it's done in a location where the cradle will be holding the silicone in place. So I need to just make sure where I'm at. And once I'm sure, I mark it right along here. I'll make my incision. And on the deer, on the mount, it will be under here. And once the seam is sealed and sanded, you really won't see it at all. Now, rather than use uh, an X-Acto knife or any kind of hobby knife that could potentially slice into the bone, which I don't want, I'm just using a real sharp paring knife coming down and right through the silicone. So now I've got an incision made to cut through the rest of the way. I don't want it to break. Oh, there we go. That's one side. Now I'll make sure it goes far enough down to the bone. Hope this is being kept in focus. There we go. There we go. That's all I need. I believe that will be all I need to help remove or extricate these antlers from their silicone prison. Okay, I did make a slot, uh, slit rather on both sides. Now I'm going to work the silicone up over the ends of the antlers to get them off. Now 
Now this will take a while. I need to be down on a tabletop to do this properly. Okay, I'm going to work this very, very, very carefully. I don't want to wreck anything. I'm going to try to remove this. Now, you know what? This is a wide rack. So I think I'm going to extend the cut just a little bit, just a touch. We're going to extend it like so. And like so. All right, now let's try and get this off of here. I'm going to try and stretch it without tearing it anymore, any further. I may have to extend this, even, yeah. I'm going to extend this even further. Are we going further, Father? Yes, going further, Father. Father, further. There we go. All right. Now I think we're good. See, he's got the tines are tall on this little boy. Let me get this first one out. Hopefully it won't rip. It's got a good tear strength. I hope it don't tear. All right, there's one. That's one. That's the tall one. That's the tallest of them. Uh, Oh, good Lord, this is the side with the with the hole in it. Let's see if I can work this thing loose. All right. I'm just going to keep going until this is off. Okay, I've gone to the opposite side. I'm taking off the left side where it doesn't have that big, uh, that really wide area that the right has at the tip. I was able to get the first two tines off here. Now I think I'm just going to slide it forward. <clears throat> takes a little doing getting it off the original. It takes a little bit of ingenuity. Now we're going to, I think I'm going to slide it off. Try and slide them off both tines at the same time. Two times tine. I'm going to try. I don't know. Let's see how this works. I may have to slit this even further up than I feared. Yeah, it's going to start to tear if I don't. So, it will be terrified if I don't. So, there. This is just the mold. It's just the mold. Wonderful, wonderful. One side. This is why it needs a support jacket. You will never get resin into this flip-floppy little thing. Aha! <laughs> okay, in order to get this through, I had I did have to slice down into that little cavity. So it's just going to have a little seam down the, down the center of it, but it's so dark that during the finishing process, I don't think it's going to make a war, a bit of difference in the world. That just popped out. And you saw that. That just popped out of the socket. Now the mold is going to completely come off with relative ease. The rubber has good stretch. There's that. And she comes off the end right now. The mold is off. Oh, the rack is clean. My goodness. <laughs> and I'll simply wash the uh, wax residue off and it'll be ready for actually mounting on the deer. Can't beat that with a stick, baby. There we go. There we have it. 
Always good to have a good sharp knife around. All right, there you have it. We have the original, the silicone mold, and the two halves of the support structure, along with the center support board and the spanner that will hold the uh, antlers, the tips of the antlers in place during the casting process. Uh, the next step will be to demonstrate how to pour a uh, urethane casting. Okay, now this gets worked back into the mother mold. The tines placed in their respective little holding areas in the fiberglass mold. Press this back in. Make sure it's good and tight. Check. Make sure she's in. Okay, that's one side. We get the other side hooked up the same way. A little trickier getting it back together than it was getting it apart. Nah, of course it is. What? You didn't expect this to be like super duper easy, did you? Hey, this is me we're talking about. I don't do anything super duper easy. No, really, this is a. Uh, this is really not all that difficult. If you're committed, um, and after this, you should be. No. <laughs> Let me grab the centerpiece here. Make sure we have the front in the proper place. Like so. And grab a couple of bolts. One or and two. That's it. That's all we need. A couple of bolts back in place. Go ahead and secure them. This is why wing nuts are chosen over ordinary, you know, machine bolts and nuts. Wing nuts allow you to get in there and just tighten it up quickly. Okay, another one here. See the little plastic lid really does come in handy. There's just a little bit of bondo that got onto the threads, but after a few uh, after a few uses, that bondo that's on the threads will disappear. And make sure this is all pulled in tight. You want it to be as tight and snug as it was when it was first created, the cradle. Those are the three-inch bolts. We take the two inch bolts and we reassemble, simply reassemble the, and this will help to lift, notice how it has a little sag, this will help to lift this back into position where you want it to be. It's one bolt. And we bring it back together where it needs to be. Get this through. Come down and let it let it let it find its hole. Push it through. Push it through. There. Now again. The wing nuts will be put in place. They'll tie it all together. And the next thing will be, uh, even before pouring, really, will be to make a center support structure so this could all be turned over upside down. 
and gravity will help hold these antler tines each in their respective section of the cradle and a little manipulating by hand will get the entire mold back into position like so it really is sort of that simple <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and create the, the, uh, the support off camera it's just assembling wood you should know how to do that by now um, and then once this is all back together it'll be all lined up and we'll go ahead and pour the first set of antlers <laughs> 